Hey guys, it's Matthew. Um, so a lot of you have been asking for an update video. Um, I'm gonna post a video after this about how my New York trip went. Um, made a good bit of money this time from my New York trip. And um, I will say uh, there are a lot of differences between the New York Diamond District and the Los Angeles Diamond District. And uh, if you don't wanna watch the whole video, uh, here's what I recommend. If you're going to source your diamonds beforehand, just go to Los Angeles. Everything's so much cheaper there and a lot faster. Um, but not as clean as New York, I will say. Okay, so I've got a whole list here and I'm going to tab out the sections of the videos. If you, if you wanna just go to the description, I'll link like timestamps of what you might wanna watch uh, the parts wise from my advice. I'm sorry about the quality. I still just film with my iPhone. Um, I have a nice camera that I use to take pictures as you can see with my photo box back there, but it doesn't do videos sadly. So uh, I still just using the iPhone 12 Pro Max. So, all right, so first step, regardless if you go to New York or not, I, I still think you should do this, sourcing your diamonds. Okay, so this is the first thing you want to do before you even set up your trip. Okay, so, so this is with, with saying you've already got all your designs. I will recommend small pendants is where all the money is made. Rings do not make much money. The market is highly saturated for rings. You will find that with smaller pendants, the market is not as saturated whatsoever. Um, like even remotely compared to to rings um or, or things such as, as tennis bracelets and uh tennis chains uh, those are all very saturated and you'll find that it's going to be very hard to sell tennis bracelets tennis chains and rings on places like ebay or etsy because people up there like to scam and make their necklaces look bigger with like illusion sets and stuff like that or they'll advertise their moissanite or lab grown as natural and it just doesn't it's not going to work in your favor okay um one thing i will say though if you want to do that stuff you can still make a decent bit of money wholesale now if you want to wholesale it go ahead and if you don't have a facebook account go ahead and make one and join moda gold club m-o-d-a gold club okay don't mention my name or anything because if you scam someone i don't want my name mentioned don't say i referenced you please just just join it <laughs> like if you're not going to scam them you're a good guy you could say like matthew sent you matthew thompson sent you um all right so sourcing your diamonds you want to find a good diamond dealer if you're very serious about this um and you're not going to run my diamond dealer around that i love so much that has the lowest prices in india and you're okay with, with wire transferring instead of PayPal, okay? I get it, Online Empire, Empire said PayPal only, so you're protected. He's just doing that to cover himself, and that's very smart. But if you're serious about this, and you do trust me, and you maybe just wanna order a few sample carrots to make sure you're not getting scammed, that's fine, and you're okay with wire transfer, go ahead and contact me, uh, add my Snapchat below, and uh, I'll, I'll give you my Diamond Dealers number on whatsapp i just please don't run him around because it makes me look bad and i don't want him to be mad at me because he has like the lowest prices in india so i'm serious about that please please do not run him around all right so so we've got our diamonds right so so quality i get a lot of questions about this should i put pick quality over quantity if you are going to wholesale on places like moda gold club you want to pick quality. These people like quality and they can sell quality for higher higher prices, much higher prices markup wise, and they're already established stores. If you want to go on places like eBay and stuff, get the lowest quality possible, okay? Because people only look for carat total weight for that, for like tennis bracelets and chains. They do not care about the quality. They just care that it is shiny and that it is everywhere. And I see a common misconception that Oh, these are VVSs, so they shine better. VVS diamonds, or higher quality diamonds, have absolutely nothing. Look at me. They have absolutely nothing to do with the shine. It is the cut of the diamond. So whenever you say somebody, oh, these, I, I hear a lot of rappers be like, oh, these VVSs be bussin', and I quote, they might be bussin', but it's not because they're VVSs. It's not. It's just not. Like... 
I mean, I've got like 30 carats of diamonds right here. I mean, they're, they're literally the same sparkle. Uh, you've got, you've literally got the VVS on top, right? This is five carats of VVS. And then you've got, there's not as many here. And then you've got, I mean, they shine the same. It, th these are eye quality or eye clarity, I to J color. And for people to think that, you know, it's clear. Sorry for that rant. Let's get away from that. Okay, so we sourced all of our diamonds, right? If you plan to have diamonds in your jewelry, all of your money is not going to be made on your trip. It is going to be made when you buy these diamonds. You do not want to pay a lot for your diamonds or overpay whatsoever because your your trip is pointless at this point if you're paying 200% what you should be for your diamonds because diamonds are going to be the most expensive part of your jewelry and if you're paying retail price for your diamonds you're just not going to make any money and this is a wasted trip and now you're set back even further than you were and your whole trip was kind of just pointless now and you're going to feel empty quite honestly and that's what I did when I went to the LA district I paid $400 a carat for diamonds and uh, they turned out to be like SI3s, which isn't even a real grade. It's basically nice I1s. Very few people use SI3. And if you see somebody using SI3, don't buy from them, okay? It goes SI1, SI2, I1, I2, I3. Look up a diamond chart if you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I, I'm so obsessed with this stuff for the past six months. It kind of sounds like I'm talking gibberish to most people. And I'm only 19 years old and, and I go into jewelers and I talk to them like this and they think I've been raised around a jeweler my entire life. It's kind of fun. Um, setting up your trip. A lot of you are like, how did you do this? You're so young. I know you were scared um, doing this. It's crazy that you went out on a 23 minute video. You watched a 23 minute video from some dude on YouTube with 23,000 subscribers or something like that. And you planned a whole trip and spent 10 grand. And just went out on a whim. Yeah, that's correct. You want you want some better advice? I'm here for you. Okay, so in LA, the jewelry district is on the 6th Street. Yeah, 7th Street, you don't want to go on. That's the fashion district. Don't go there. Get a hotel on 5th Street. Get a hotel on 5th Street. Okay, the hotel prices in New York and LA are roughly the same. Okay, but your Uber ride from the LA airport to your hotel is much cheaper. It's like $36 instead of like, in New York, I think I paid 120 going from Newark to my hotel on 45th Street. Yeah, but if you're going to New York, you want your hotel on 46th or 45th Street because the jewelry district's on 40, 47th and 48th. Um, which is right there by Times Square, which is really cool. If you want to experience that, I do recommend going to New York because it's really cool. Um, yeah, so set up set up your trip like that. Don't get a super expensive hotel, but don't get a super cheap one. In LA, there's ones where it's like you can get a bunk somewhere. Don't do that because then your jewelry is just going to get stolen by from some homeless dude. If you want to feel safer, go to New York. Go to New York because... Uh, you are, my Matthew estimation, you are about 20 times more likely to get robbed in L.A. Um, gu guaranteed, guaranteed, um, gu guaranteed to get, to get robbed in L.A. I will say, if you're looking to get, like, wholesale chains, don't go to New York. Because um, you're just going to find retail pricing there. Retail pricing in L.A. for chains is like wholesale pricing in New York. That's uh, that's how bad it was. You can literally just go to, to Nova Gold right there on 6th Street in LA and get 14 karat chains, rope, diamond cut and beautiful chains. I got one for my mother for, for like $39, $40 a carat. Right now, probably 41 to 42. Price of gold like eighteen ninety three per per ounce. Sorry, I do this all day. Um, when you get there, here's the when you get there part. Um, go ahead and go to your hotel. Please do not, please do not, um, sorry, please do not 
go out there with your duffel bag with all your clothes in it and your backpack with your laptop and stuff in it. Not that I did that or anything. Uh, roaming the city for two hours before you check into your hotel. Go ahead and check into your hotel and then walk out with, with your stuff. Um, uh, it amazes me how I did not get robbed. I'm gonna be quite honest with you. So yeah, go ahead and do that, okay? Uh, the jewelry district tends to shut down at about five. Now the laborers, they start closing at like seven. They, you know, they're just doing labor and stuff, setting diamonds, all that fun stuff when, on like the upper stories of the building, stuff like that. <sighs> okay. So let's say we just get there the first day. We're there for three days. We're just dropping off our waxes. Go ahead, drop off your waxes at your casting place. Okay, go ahead and do that. And then you can roam around and look, you know, it's fun to do that, but don't listen to anybody there. If you're in LA, don't make eye contact with anyone, and I'm serious about that. 90% um, of those people aren't even homeless, if I'm being quite honest with you. Um, can I get an um counter that I've said? All right. Here's my biggest thing. Do not make impulses. Do not make impulse. Don't make impulses. That's one of the things that is first mistake. LA, I made impulses. They didn't ha he didn't have the tennis bracelet and tennis chain mountings that I wanted. So I just ended up buying bigger ones and bigger ones. I got to buy bigger diamonds and more diamonds with the chain. And then, then guess what? I spend more money and I'm out of my budget already. You have a set thing that you want there and you get it or you don't get it at all. Yeah, I don't know how crystal clear I have to make with that with you. And if you like, if you have like a thousand dollars extra budget because they didn't have something you didn't want in LA, then go wholesale a chain or something and sell that on, on Moda. Cause I mean, those things on Moda, you know, $44 a gram, easy if they're new. And it's ridiculous the monopoly some of the dealers up there have. Like, I'm not trying to, like, run anyone out of business, obviously. Like, we're everyone watching this is more than likely small time. You don't have, a, like, 100000 to a $1 million to spend. You're not running these people in these groups out because these people have money, okay? Um, but, yeah. Don't take direct references is my next one. Let's say you pick up your castings, right? We just picked up our castings. It's day two, okay? You don't know where to go to have your stuff polished and set because usually you want to find someone that, that, that does both polish and setting. A lot of people do that, which is not mentioned in online empires videos. You really, really, really don't want to take their direct references. Specifically, if somebody says, my cousin does this, Don't go there. Not that I've made that mistake. And that my jewelry has uh, been in New York for 12 weeks now. Um, anyway. <clears throat> anyway, let's not talk about the $12,000 Matthew has possibly lost. <sighs> I'm serious about that. Um, yeah. Don't take direct references. Now, here's how to tell. You have to be really good at psychology. See, I'm really good at psychology. I'm really good at basing stuff. If they give you a pause and they're like scratching their head, they're like, you want somebody that sets and polishes. Then they're like, um, I get it. You know, go to this person. And then they're like, and they give you, they find a card. Then go to that person. Be, because chances are they don't get that question much. They're usually good at doing, you know, what they do for for people that are on the first level um and they don't usually have references asked from them so they're like oh shoot i don't know where to send this dude i don't really get that question asked very much uh so yeah when you pay uh you always want to make sure to get yourself a receipt especially if you're wholesaling this jewelry because if something comes back on you, you want to be able to cover cover yourself like, oh, this is where I get this. This is, especially with casting, this is where I got this casted. Okay, so you cannot tell me this is not solid gold. 
Uh, I would, I'd love to post the screenshots of what some dude tried to pull a fast one on me one time, and it made me so mad. It, he made me so mad, claiming my gold was not solid, and that half of the diamonds were fake. The, the dude's an idiot, and he, he, two stones were missing out of 75 on the ring. Sorry, I'm going to go on a rant here. Two of the 75 stones were missing on the ring of 1.2 millimeter diamonds. These are shit little diamonds. They're tiny. They're eye clarity. I to J color. The stone's worth literally $1 each. I've sold these on eBay for $1 each plus shipping, okay? And he threw a absolute bitch fit. Okay, so so just make sure, and I, I had the receipts to cover cover my ass, and it was nice, because I got to tell him to uh, basically F off, and it was nice. Seriously, though, receipts. <laughs> okay, when you pay. Always pay in cash. I'll always pay in cash. I always pay in cash, because, you know, sometimes you can get discounts, stuff like that. And, on, like, Online Empire says, yes, you can negotiate, uh your prices when you when you do cash at the casting you know you you can generally get some leeway uh you know negotiating here and there the key is to not get anxious when doing it like uh, oh, i'm like kind of scared to negotiate this price you need to look like you've done this before that is a huge tip for you you need to look like you've done this before okay because if you you're this scared little kid somebody is going to take advantage of you especially if you don't get the right references but if you if you want help from me, someone that has learned and lost money from his mistakes, go ahead and contact my Insta or my Snap below, and I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you. Because like I mean, there's a lot of money to be made in this business, and I'm not going to be stingy when I only have twenty to thirty thousand dollars of assets right now within jewelry at retail, like a hundred thousand. But still. I'm not going to be stingy about it when, when billions are made each year. I'm not going to be this stingy little weirdo, okay? And this is not racism for me, but if you're white or black going into a jewelry district, you're going to look like you don't belong, okay? Because especially when a five foot eight scrawny 19-year-old white kid walks up in, in places asking about clarity of diamonds and stuff, people kind of get confused, okay? Uh, generally this is how it works and it's not right everybody will tell you this uh indians usually sell diamonds um hispanics usually do casting and uh mostly arabic people will do wholesaling for chains and um arabic people and indian people will also do a lot of selling of jewelry um on the first floor every now and then you'll see some white salesmen but not not usually really it's very rare it's i mean it's just not racist i mean if you go there you could see like you're like this dude's not lying like i'm just saying <laughs> but yeah it's why i'm trying to give you this advice um so so you're you're prepared when you get there so you know you know you need to look like you know what you're talking about here's a big part when you pick up your jewelry uh I want you to be extremely careful, okay? There's, the jewelry district is probably one of the most heavily guarded places in the city just because of it's where all the money is. There's so much money in these places. So there's private security everywhere. Not usually too many cops, but there will be cops. You're okay in the jewelry district, but when you walk to your hotel, if you're not taking an Uber back to your hotel, which I strongly recommend after you pick up your jewelry, Get an Uber back to your hotel. Okay, that's the only time you have to Uber uh, besides going to and from the airport. Please get an Uber. Okay, because you're carrying every single bit of what you have planned and worked for in your pocket. Or in if you brought a backpack, don't bring a backpack in your backpack because you're going to look like a tourist. Okay. Uh, please take an Uber. I mean, it, it is 10 to $15 or er, in New York, 15 to $20. <laughs> I think it was about 15 each Uber ride to the hotel. That will save you possibly whatever your whole trip was. Because that's true. Um, that's really all I had to, to say here. Um, yeah. Uh, also, one big thing is if... 
you know, you're just getting into this, here's some supplies that I, I really recommend. And I'm going to link everything below because I've wasted a lot of money buying different types of things that are not really what I needed. Um, and I don't have affiliate links. I don't make any money off of this. I'm just trying to help you guys. Uh, the best jewelers loop to see the quality of diamonds and stuff like that and, and your clarity. Uh, sorry if I can even get it out. This is one I got from Amazon. It was only about $10 and I've ordered like $100 ones that don't work as well. Uh, if I can ever get this thing to, f to freak out. Uh, it has like a light and it has two separate magnifications right here. So that, that that's, this is my favorite one. Do not get a cheap diamond tester. Don't get any diamond tester but this one. It is $209, but it is well worth the money. This is called a Presidium 3 diamond tester. It is what every big jeweler you'll see in the district uses. And it is completely worth it because HPHT lab grown diamonds won't get past it. CVDs will. I just accidentally turned it on. But HPHTs will not. Okay. You want that. Uh, what else do we want here? This is got a lot of shit. You'll want a gauge caliper, okay? You, this is used for like, uh, customers are very picky, you'll come to find in this business. This is used to determine the millimeter of diamonds. Uh, millimeter of diamonds, the millimeter of chains, the millimeter of rings, the millimeter of really any type of jewelry, whatever they need to know. Weird people, I'm telling you. You'll just want some like longer tweezers, gemstone tweezers. Don't know what the frick these are called. Okay, these are just ones I randomly have. Um, and I've used them. All right, I will link these. These are good for sorting your diamonds. You'll want a big one and a small one. These are good if you want to sell your leftover diamonds or count how many diamonds you need, okay? You'll want a big gemstone scoop is what they're called and a small gemstone scoop. I got these off eBay. I'll link it. It's all on one listing and it's like you can buy both types on it. Shipping's really good on it. A ring sizer. It's enough said there. eBay, I'll link that. It's like it links you to my eBay, imagine. Um, what else? What else do you guys want? Mm, big things here. If you're in the district, okay, you bought your diamonds in parcels. They came carat total weight. You don't buy them by specific amount of stones when you order from India. You are going to want... My parents thought I was dealing drugs when I first bought these. You're going to want small bags, small tiny little bags, okay? And you're going to use your gemstone scoops to count these with your tweezers, okay? You'll put them all in your big one, and you will just... With it flat on the table, you will count each diamond into. You'll slide it over with your tweezers. Let's say I have a, a diamond tennis bracelet that needs 87. I'm going to count 87 down here. And then with them all on the side, I will slowly just kind of fidget them onto this. Okay, let's say I, I gave the setter an extra stone in case he loses or breaks one. Uh, I have 88 into here. And then I will open up my small little drug baggie it's not drugs my mom thought it was though and you will slide it right into there and you will you will take a sharpie you want to buy a sharpie you will write 88 1.7 millimeter or whatever millimeter your stones are never ever ever give your setter all your stones because he's either gonna switch them or he's gonna just take them like somebody in new york might have done to me whole carrot total weight because I thought I could trust him okay never trust anyone your first time around at least your fifth time around maybe tenth sure not your first okay I thought, I thought I could trust him I, I was chill you know it was good I thought whatever Wh whatever business cards I think I got these from banner buzz buzz banner some shit like that got like 
200 of them for $10. They look pretty sick. I'll say so myself. They look pretty sick. All right? Make your own design. Get a royalty-free logo. Pop it up there. Get yourself a Shopify website set up and paste it up there. Um, because people in the district are going to ask for your card, and you're going to want one of these if you don't want to look stupid. That's about all, really. And, uh, yeah, also for shipping, if you have bracelets and stuff, you're going to, you don't want to ship these in, like, a bags like I just showed you. Go on Amazon. I think it's, like, $6.99 for two. Get yourself some nice bracelet boxes, uh, which smell like gas, and I don't know why. I went on eBay, if you're selling rings, and buy yourself some ring boxes. It was like $12 or $20 for 12 of these or something like that. You can buy these in the district uh, finding stores and stuff, or jewelry supply stores. And uh, for like small pendants and stuff like that, you'll get like these little cotton filled uh, little cardboard boxes. They're super cheap. I'll link those as well. I'm gonna link all of the stuff that I bought just to help you guys. Uh, and I make no money off of that. And yeah, that's really, that's really it. And yeah, just please, just please be careful doing this stuff. And if you're scared about a purchase, if you're in the district or something and you took my advice, you went to the district, Please, please feel free to add me on Snap or, or message my Insta. I don't want any of you guys getting scammed like I have before because I know what I'm doing now and I just don't want you in trouble. So yeah, just go ahead and contact me. But yeah, I think that's about it really. All I can, uh, all I can say now. Yeah, that's about it. All right, well... I'm gonna post a video after this, just some random videos I took while I was in the district. I didn't really get to video the whole process because I was with my mother. She she kind of invited herself on the trip, okay? And I don't want to talk about it. Um, but yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> all right. Um, I guess I'll uh, go ahead and get this uploaded with all the tabs and stuff. You guys have a nice night, or whatever it is for you.